the uh, Banksia pod, uh, if you Google it, you'll find pictures of, uh, of a small tree, and this thing sort of sticks up out of it, and it, uh, it looks, it has a, a yellow flower on it, and actually there's, there's a little bit of what might be yellow, yellow flower fuzz left on this one. But the, it's an absolutely renewable uh, turning source. Uh, the, the tree produces them however many times a year they do, I don't know. The uh, thing with Banksia pods, though, is that uh, they are full of seeds. So I had uh, actually mentioned to Steve that anybody in the front row might want to wear a face shield, or at least <laughs> glasses. Because when I turn this you thing on, up, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where the seeds are going to go. I mean, they, they, they're going to fly out of here. They might fly out of here. They might not. Uh, at least when I'm actually turning, most of the stuff tends to you know, fall right at your feet. But when you turn this on, it's, uh, they're going in any direction. Uh, so that said, anybody who wants to leave, uh, now's your chance. <laughs> so the... Uh, I, This is how you get them. They, this is how they arrive. You got to cut the ends off them to get a, a, a clean surface that you can uh, that you can bear on. Uh, I just cut this one just five minutes ago. Do you need to stabilize them at all? You need to stabilize, need to stabilize them. them no. no. This is how they arrive. This is how uh, how I use them. And uh, just tie it up and throw the the end pieces off somewhere. Uh, most of the time. They, they look like this, where they, there's a sort of central core to them. Can you uh, want to zoom on the, on the core? They, they have a, a central core that is generally slightly discolored. Uh, somewhere. So the, this this central core here is uh, is usually pretty centered. Now, this is the first one I've come across in a long time that it's off on this end. So I usually just put a point on the on the central core, and that's the the really densest part of it. So I've got a reasonable chance that it's going to run from end to end pretty straight. Uh, because this one's bounced off to the side, I'm just going to try it on the, the slightly off on that. It looks like it's reasonably well balanced there, anyway. And for uh, for those of us that are getting a little bit older, that normally wear reading glasses, uh, there are several different places that have these safety glasses that have uh, you know little, little magnifiers on them, so you can actually see what you're doing and not have an excuse not to wear safety glasses. Uh, since this this thing produces so much crap and uh, sharp little points. I definitely want to wear a face shield as well. So I'm going to. Uh, you can start out roughing them out with uh, with a roughing gouge, or you can do it the Allen laser style with the uh, with the big skew. So I'm just going to just give this. Uh, I haven't. Uh, nobody's dead yet. Okay. <laughs> Are you holding the skew flat when you're doing that? Yes. So I'm cutting that, that way. Now I'm just I'm turning it.
Now normally when I'm uh, cutting a, a tenon, I'll, I'll put the calipers on there and just cut down until it pops in. But because this thing has lots of holes in it, I, I don't recommend doing that because uh, it catches in a hole. It's, uh, Joel, beware. It's now a, a wet forehead. Uh, so I'm, we've got a little ways to go, but not making that work. Yeah, yeah, for that it's the turner that gets it. Yeah, you get thrown back. I know if you, you talk to all these guys, you're supposed to turn the, uh, the machine off for everything that you, when, it, when you do anything. Uh, all right, so this, I'm going to catch this tenon here on the, on the chuck. So I'm going to just reduce this a little bit more here to, uh, so it'll fit in the chuck. in it, the way that Alan Lacer showed us how to do it, and I took the spring out. I found the spring got bunged up anyway, and uh, there was enough stuff would get caught in the, in the thing that the spring didn't work. Not a dovetail uh, jaws on this. Uh, I think this prob probably works better on the, these because they're more fibrous than real wood. Now you can see after I've got through the, the outer shell here that we've got this fuzz and this, uh, this makes a hell of a mess all over the floor. You'll be sweeping up brown fuzz like this for quite a while and it gets everywhere. But you gotta turn through this and get down to the, the harder core so we'll keep going here. Here, but this is this is what we're looking for. Is this <coughs> this here? And you can see all these little, little things in here. These are the, the actual seed bits, and uh, we'll dig them out later. In nature, they only come out when the tree is burned. Yes. to do one of these today so we've got uh, really only need one area where it's at the widest part without any fuzz so if I try and pick it around about here because the, this area here I'm going to be turning away and then any, anything up here I'm not too worried about because we're going to get right down to the core. <laughs> Wow. 
that. Doing uh, finials, you kind of work from the, the point back in towards the supported area. So we're going to try and finish out on the out here as best I can. And because this stuff is kind of fibrous and doesn't really have a, a true grain, we're not running with the grain so much. Uh, so we kind of have to finish it off out here before we move back in here because to try to come back out to it is uh, could be hazardous. Uh, pretty much about it. 
If you're really steady, you might be able to get a little smaller. I think, uh, I'm sure if you ask Cindy Drosa, this, this is monster, but uh, I'm not that good. I buy uh, sandpaper and bargain box from uh, Klingler. Uh, this is 400. <laughs> Which is soccer? Um, 150. This is 800. Way to not have to put a finish on it? That's next. Okay. He's always jumping the gun. <laughs> <laughs> Let's And this is the Jewelers Rouge, this is the fine one. Just rubbing it on and then just holding the paper towel to polish it off. And if you keep a little pressure on both sides of it, it just stabilizes it so you can actually get the. That's the same to. polishing compound you use uh, for uh, yep. polishing metal? Yep. On a buffing wheel? Yep, that's what I came then, with the buffing wheel. Barbara salvage. Yeah. So you're just that's applying really it so. directly to the piece? Yeah, just charging, basically, instead of charging your buffing wheel, I'm charging the, the, uh, the, the piece. And then just buffing it off with the paper towel. Seed spot right there. That that's not. Don't be able to turn that out. It's a bit too narrow. A little bit of vibration on this part here, but that'll sand out.
Well, my Australian uh, botanist friend assures me that Australia has lots of animals that'll kill you, but none of the plants will. So, uh, going by her recommendation, it's not uh, not such a terribly toxic thing. Uh, now we've. We've got uh, different sized little openings here. You've got these guys and these ones here. These, these ones here still have stuff inside them, so we're going to leave it like this. We've got to just dig them out. And okay, so what uh, kind of do is just, just go in and dig them out. This is just a, a nail sharpened, stuck into a piece of wood. You can use an awl or you can. You should I've ask seen somebody to turn you a nice handle for that. Yeah, I don't want any <laughs> turners though. Uh, oh, can you leave the seeds in, or do they eventually just fall out? Uh, you probably can leave them in. It just looks better to take them out. Just the uh, you can do more things if you take them out. You can do inlays. So the, the uh, that's what I was going to say. Some people will do inlays and in either in all of the openings or some of the openings. You can do hollow forms with these. I tried to do one with this uh, kind of finial to reattach it, and I decided not to when I was picking pieces up all over the living room. It exploded. <laughs> sort of turning from, from actual cutting when I get in, in to this part here. I can't see the blade, can you? Okay. Uh, I'm coming in, cutting motion here, and then as I come into the, the very bottom, thin part of the shaft, I just roll it over and then it turns it into scraping motion. So I'm actually doing a scraping motion up here rather than trying to get in this way which I probably couldn't get in there on the angle. Pine, it's probably a lot softer than cherry. I mean, this this is 150 grit, and you can see it's actually sort of doing some actual shaping of the of the wood of the, uh, the pod. Yeah, we're doing it. Oh, we've got more pot, more seeds to dig out. My special tool right in the front. No. There we go. Thank you. Because I've narrowed this down here, I'm just going to support it as best I can to not snap it off.
Yeah, so that's that's it down to 400. If you wanted to, you certainly could, you know, put a friction polish on it at that stage, and that uh, that'll work just fine. Is there any recommended finish for that uh, for those parts? Not that I'm aware of. So now, now we're down to, to 1,200 here. If you don't get it all over the, the pot, it doesn't really matter because you're going to pick it up on the paper towel and polish it in that way. You do need a little bit of pressure with this. I kind of, I, I kind of try and do it from both sides so, so I'm not putting too much torque on it. So there's the, there's the, the white. And yeah, so we get a little, little bit of paper towel gets caught in it. But if, if you're doing it with the friction polish or shellac polish, now let them just stick and, and seal, and it, uh, it gets to be really tough to get out. Cloth wouldn't prevent that. Cloth. Yeah, cloth would prevent that as long as you didn't get it caught well, and wrapped around it. down to the finish.